Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to fit a new timing belt and water pump on this 2015 Seat Leon. Uh, it's a 1600 TDI this one. Um, this, this engine's in quite a few of the Seats and Volkswagens, Audis. Um, the general procedure will be pretty much the same. Um, just some of the actual strip down will be a bit different but obviously I'm going to run it through, run through the full guide on this model um, but say once you're there you can just follow that if you uh, if you're doing the belt on on a different vehicle so i'll just show you quickly before we get started uh, i'll put some links in the description below to all the parts that we're using the part numbers um, but i've put uh, we've got the timing pin kit here again there's a couple of different styles of uh, timing pin kit but i'll put some links to them we're going to fit a new auxiliary belt and we've got a full gates kit uh, with a water pump um, it's got the this is the modified one does have the electric pump on it and this one just bypasses that basically it just has this little port for the uh, plunger to sit into so, so other than that we've got the belt in there we've got two idler wheels we've got some uh, new nuts and studs there and then we've got the tensioner as well so um, but yeah i've got links in the description below to all the parts used if you want to check any of them out Um, we're using a two poster ramp today, it does make the job a little bit easier um, but it's not too bad to do off the, off the ramp. All I'd do is just put a jack under the sill from the driver's side here, just jack it up quite high um, just to get and put it on an axle stand just to give you some decent access around the inside of the wheel arch here so we can get to the bottom crank pulley. Um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop the top engine cover off. We're going to um, get these fuel pipes and the filter out of the way. We'll just move that over there. We'll get some pipes off the uh, coolant bottle and move that out of the way. Um, just to give ourselves a bit of room. And I'll put it up in the air and just show you some of the bits we've got to get off underneath. We'll be dropping the coolant out if I can find a decent spot to drop it down. If not, I might just let it run out when we uh, take the water pump off. But I'll run you through that as we get to that point. So. First thing I'll do is get the header tank out of the way and um, to get the connector off it on these Volkswagen style clips all you need is a flat bladed screwdriver pop that in there, push that back and then you'll be able to pull the uh, pull the plug off I'll we'll just do that in a minute uh, It's just got like a plastic um, lug there just to pull that out I'll do is just get that up and move that out of the way uh, This little, uh, there's a little plastic clip there just to get that out and then for the fuel filter there's three 10 mils We've got two 10mm bolts, one there and another one there. Just down at the bottom there, you can just see there's a nut as well, so we'll get them off and get all these bits out of the way. To get um, the fuel filter completely out of the way, I'm just going to undo these two pipes here. Um, just a little spring clip, just to pinch them up with a pair of pliers. Um, they are a similar size, so it can be quite hard to remember which way round they go. So all I'll normally do is just put a little paint mark on the rubber and on the pipe there, and you can't get it wrong when putting it back together. So I'll just get them off as well. Right, so now that we've got the uh, coolant header tank and the fuel filter out of the way, you see that's given us a bit more room. And on this model, we've got the DPF uh, pressure pipes coming in front of the cam belt casing as well. So we're just going to take out this torque screw there. This one of Torx 30 socket. And I'm hoping with that, most models, you can just get away with just taking that out and just pulling it to the side. So we'll try that. But worst case, if I uh, can't quite get the cover off, might just have to take this lower, out, lower one out from down there. And that's a torque screw again head going in from that way so and once we've undone this just that one clip the pipes from the case in there as well uh, and then we should be able to just this little flick tab there just to get that off there another one there and then the casing should just pull upwards and get that out and that will reveal the top part of the cam belt so um, once we've got that off we'll go down to just uh, whipping the alternator belt off and then we can do some of the bits underneath Right, 
it's just a little bit tight just to get the uh, cover off on this model. A few of them that I've done, you can actually just get it out past it. But basically where I'm trying to pull it up here, the two pipes with the uh, temp sensor and the manifold there get in the way. So just I undo this temperature sensor and pull that out and then we can pull both pipes across to the side a little bit. Once that's out of the way, we should be able to get the cover off. So. Just one more, just allows a little bit more access as well. Just this top, uh, little top uh, Torx bolt again there, just takes that off and just uses it, gives you that extra little bit of room. Uh, just won't come on that one tonight, just won't quite get past it. So I've had to take the actual sensor out itself. Um, so look at this one's not too old so it ain't come out too bad but always just attempt it first just without taking it out just in case you have any problems and it rounds off or out like that um, but it was it's pretty tight in there um, but the best way i found to get it out obviously because it's got the wire on it you can't get a socket on the top of it put my spanner on it 17 mil so i already sat there and i just put a bar in against the bracket on the exhaust just to put some pressure on it just to crack it off and you generally find once you've cracked it off, it will just spin out quite nicely then. So, uh, but now that that's out of the way, we should be able to just pull the cover up. So. Yeah, so we've now got the top cover off. You can just see the cam belt on there. That's the original Volkswagen one. Um, just show you quickly though, the, t the, the top cover can be really tough to get off. You've just got to be not too hard, you know, not going to be too rough with it, but you have got to be a bit forceful and just working it through. It's just this section, the back piece with the heat shield on, and this little bit there. This runs really tightly in that gap, and you sort of got to just work it up through against that bracket. And it's just a bit tight, just getting it up there. So, um, but it does come. So once that temp sensor's out of the way, you can get it to get it cleared past it. So, and then that, that's done. The next step we'll do is uh, take the alternator belt off. And um, this pulley there is your tensioner. And it's got 16 mil bolt in the center. And all you want to do is put your spanner on there, just turn it anti-clockwise. That'll take the load off the belt and you'll be able to um, pull the alternator belt off then. Once I've done that, I'll just put it up in the air. We'll get the wheel off, get a bit of room underneath the arch, take the, uh, just have a look at some bits under there. the original alternator belt and just to test it if you just sort of split it around the opposite way and just spread it to sort of like that just look up for any just to see how sort of worn it is normally if it's really badly uh, perished you'll get a lot of cracks in there it's not too bad this one this is the original one it's sort of uh, six year old now so we're gonna put a new one on it tonight anyway it's ideal time to do it while you're doing the cam belt and you've got it off so I'll um, just prop it up in the air now and um, we'll just get the wheel off. Uh, so now that we've got the wheel off, next step, we're just going to get this section of the inner arch off here. So we've got a load of torque screws all around the outside, a couple a bit lower down and one or two that go in from underneath and we're going to take the under tray down as well uh, again this is held in a load of torque screws a few bit bigger ones at the back um, and then just little ones around the side and it just uh, i think it just slides in at the front but we'll just get the under tray down and that arch off and then uh, we can move on to the next step Uh, 
So just, you can see now with the under tray off and this side arch liner off, just gives us some really good access. We needed to get the under tray off so that we can put the jack on the sump in a bit once we get the engine mounting off. Um, as well as the bolts on the under tray, there's a couple of little tabs at the front you just need to flick out with your uh, flat bladed screwdriver uh, just to get them off. And you can see that tensioner a bit better now that it just had to uh, slacken off to the left to get the alternator belt off there. So, um, But at this stage now, if um, obviously I'm doing the water pump, so I'm just going to um, just going to get some of the coolant, just going to drain some of the coolant out. Now you can take this bottom hose off here, you can either do it with that, that clip there or you can just use a flat bladed screwdriver just in that tab there, flick that down and you can work the, the pipe off there. I'm just going to do that to drop some coolant out of it. Um, it won't get all of it out. When you take the water pump off, you still will lose quite a lot, but it's just, just ideal now. I can put the drain underneath it and just drop some of it out. And while you're dropping it down, you want to be taking the header tank cap off as well. That'll just allow it to flow through a bit better. So um, we'll just drop the coolant out quick uh, and then we'll go on to the next step. We're going to be taking this pulley off. So uh, we only won't be taking it off on the uh, these four on the outside though. So it'll be touching the centre ones. So. So that's got some of the coolant drain now. It'll just save a little bit of mess later on. Um, if you are doing it with this little tab, I find it easier to do it there. But sometimes if they're really old, it might get a little bit tight. Um, but when you're putting them back on, just push your clip in first, work it on, and you'll hear it clip into place when it's clipped, clipped in, you know, it's home. Um, now to get the bottom crank pulley off, I'm going to want a size 10 multi-hex socket. Uh, these are quite common on a lot of Volkswagen group stuff. So I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get one of them from as well. So I'm just going to undo these four now. Just uh, one thing to take note of, not so important now, but when you're refitting it, it does only go in one position. This hole in the crank pulley there lines up with that little tab behind it. So just remember that when you're putting it back together. And sometimes just be a little bit tight if it is. So we'll give it a really light knock just with a copper hammer. Got a copper hammer or a soft hammer. So, so it just needs a gentle knock just to crack it off. So next step we're going to do now is just get all the lower casing bolts out and um, we've just got there's some torques here's one in there another one just a bit higher up in that uh, in that hole there and um, we've got uh, another one there and one there as well i think that's it i don't know if there's one in the center there but we'll check that out in a minute uh, there is a little locking tab just in the bottom here just out of work a flat screwdriver in there to release the clip on the bottom to get that off so well, i'll just get all them out now see if we can get the bottom cover off uh, and then we can drop it back down to get the actual engine mounting off. Just while I'm underneath, once this is off, I might do some of the engine mounting bolts, just the ones that we can access. Um, but I don't really want to take um, too many out until we've supported the weight of the engine with the uh, jack. So. But uh, we'll just get that casing off for now. Right, so the cover's all loose now, but it won't fully come out until we've got the engine mounting bracket off. So um, you can just see there. What I'd do is undo them four bolts, and then you just uh, just put your little screw, your flat blade screwdriver in there, and just sort of lever it upwards to work it out off the back. Can't quite uh, show you at the minute, but when it's off, I'll just show you how it how it looks on the back to show you how it uh, sort of clips in. But for now, I'm going to drop the ramp back down, and we'll soon be working at uh, normal light. All I'm going to do. Once we start taking the engine mounting off, I'm just going to put the jack underneath the sump here. I mean, this has got a pad on it, so it's not too bad, um, but I'll probably use a bit anyway. Sometimes I just put a bit of wood under the sump there, just so it doesn't damage it. And the only thing just to be mindful of, you have just got the uh, got a sensor in the back there, uh, and the sump plug side of it's there, which is bare. So, but normally, as long as you jack it sort of around this area, it should be pretty safe. So I've just got the jack underneath the sump there, um, so I did just put a bit of wood on it in the end. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to do now is just take this engine mount off. And just before you take it off, just give the jack a couple of pumps, just so you can take, just so you take the load up, so you know that when you undo these bolts and take the mount off, it's not going to just drop down suddenly. So, so just to get this mount off, got a bolt at the back there. 
one there, another one that side. And then we've got two on the top there to get off. We'll get this, this piece of the mount off and this piece underneath bolts horizontally into the block there. Uh, so we'll get that off afterwards uh, and then we'll be able to set the, uh, just spin the engine over and just pin it into place, set the actual time, set it in the timing position. So uh, we'll run through that once we've got the mount off. So that's the main mount off and the bottom casing just fell out there as well when that come down. That little tab there basically just looks like that on the back. And all you're trying to do is hook through there into that and just so you can just pull that down off the little locating pegs. So we're now ready just to put it all into the, uh, to pin it up in the timing, in the correct timing position. And I'll just run you through where the actual pin holes are and where they line up roughly. Then we'll turn the engine over uh, into the correct position to show you pinning it up. But basically on the main camshaft there's this uh, little lug in the back of there that's got this single locking pin on it there. And this is you want to be lining that up and there's a hole I'll say once I've spun it round I'll just show you where it exactly where it locates. There's another pin for the fuel pump which you can just see the tab there at the back and that will that will come into line and the locking pin will hold it to that hole there. And this, on these later style ones are a little bit different to the earlier ones. Uh, they used to just have like a, like a grooved piece with a pin in it and an arrow on it where you'd line up. Whereas the later style locking pin is like this. Um, it goes through the two bolt holes and this little lug there lines up with that little pin, with that little dimple bit there. So, um, but I'll just get it to, all I'm going to do is spin the engine over. Just got a 19mm uh, multi spline socket. So we'll just put that on now, turn the engine over, and just till we get to the point where all these, all three points line up nicely. So it'll basically be at TDC, top dead center. So we'll just start spinning that over and see if we can get it into the position and show you it to, and show you pinning it all up quickly. All I'm doing at the bottom here is just get a really long extension, a decent ratchet. It just means that you can go into the bottom crank pulley. And you can just turn it over from outside, um, just from outside the wheel arch, and you can see all the pinholes a bit better. Right, so we've now I've got that into the timing position. I'll just try and show you just roughly through the hole there. You can see that hole at the top there. And just be careful not to line it up with that hole at the bottom. Uh, is this one that's just above that that you will be lining up to and just see I'm um, nearly about bang in line with that pin should go okay into there you've got your fuel pump pin on that's lined up nicely there and then the crank pulley there obviously this little noggin's located about there which that's what we've got on the bottom of the uh, tool there to locate with that and then basically this just goes into the stud holes and then this pin there lines up into that hole there. So if we just put that in, that should. It's nice, you just try to show you at the back. You just see that just not quite in. So what we'll do is just, just turn it just slightly, just so we can push that in, and we'll pop, we'll pop that into place. Then make sure that the two top ones line up. Now if you've lined your cam up and your fuel pump, and this bottom one isn't in the same, isn't in the right position, and that noggin isn't there to sit that. It'll just be because it's 180 degrees out. Just do another full rotation of the camshaft, line that back up, and you should find that your crankshaft will then be in the right place. So I just adjust this just slightly now with the ratchet, just to get it bang on in line and put all the pins in. Yeah, so we've just got all them pins located into place now. Just see the uh, the fuel pump one there, the camshaft one there. It is a little bit tricky, this uh, the camshaft one, the aircon pipes get in the way a bit, so I just had to drop the engine a bit just to get it in past it. And they're a really snug fit, so if you can just see, you really see it just down the back there, but where it locates into as well. Uh, and then the 
the bottom one now it's just nice and bang on in the middle there just see it's absolutely perfect that's so. uh, but now that they're locked off in place next thing we're going to do is just slacken this tension and nut off and then we'll get the belt off get on to change and everything um you can do these with slackening off this little bolt there as well and that just allows you the back's locked just allows a bit of flow in the pulley you do need to slacken the main camshaft bolt off as well you can do the same again with a fuel pump um, we used to do that on the early ones where they had like a three bolt type fitting um, but on these later ones i've always just pinned them up there's no problem at all with doing that still it does sometimes make the belt just a little bit tighter just to get on but uh, there's no problem at all doing it this way so we'll just slacken that tension and nut off next Uh, it's just undone the 15 mil nut and just put a 6 mil allen key in just in the tensioner and just back that off anti-clockwise and that's uh, slacking the belt off now so now that that's all slack we'll be able to um, pull the belt off we'll take these idler pulleys out the little top one there um little one down there and then once that's off we'll just get the water pump out it's held on with some multi-spline sockets and we just want to be taking the plunger out for the electric pump as well so just see that's held on with a little torque screw there. Obviously, as we take the water pump out, we will lose quite a bit of coolant, so you ought to just put a catch tray under it. We'll get everything stripped off now, and then run you through uh, putting everything back together. I'm just cleaning the water pump up as well before uh, uh, reseating the new one. So that's the old cam belt off, uh, it's the original, uh, well it's not got no record of having a belt and it is an original, uh, well, it is a Volkswagen belt so I'm presuming it's the original but uh, if just look at it, just sort of pinch it up, it's not, not too bad, sometimes they might be a bit cracked and perish but that's not too bad that one. Um, did, just to get the belt off there, just because, um, because of these DPF pipes, it was really tight so I've just took the pin out temporarily you can just feed it around it with it in if you want but i know it's it's not going to move too far out of position and obviously i can just line that back up and pin it in again so just while i get the belt on and off just took that pin out so just just makes it a little bit easier for getting the belt off that's all uh, but now we've got most of the uh, the idlers off just going to crack the water pump off drop the coolant out take that um plunger out as well so for the water pump you just want a size 10 Try square socket again. Yeah, so that's the water pump out now. Uh, this this one is the um, original electronic style and basically it has a little plunger in there what it does to get it warmed up quicker it just runs this guide over there and shuts the the fins off so it heats up quicker um, but the new one in the gates kit it's like a modified version it comes without the without this piece on it so um, all it does is just sit into there and it doesn't have the actual cover to actuate so um, the next thing we're going to do now now that everything's off just give it a quick um I'll just show you in the bottom there. We'll just give it a quick spray off with some uh, brake cleaner just to get the antifreeze off all the pulleys and everything. And then the the water pump has an O-ring seal on it, just at the back there, it'll come on the new one. And um, we're just gonna give this a quick clean up, just with a rag, just give it a good wipe down. If it's a little bit rough, you probably just want to give it a bit of a, a little bit of a clean up with some emery cloth, but I think a good clean with a rag will do on that one tonight. Uh, I'll just do that, then we'll uh, put the new water pump into place and uh, I'll start running you through some of the torque settings for the pump bolts and the idler pulleys uh, and then we'll get the start getting the belt back on. I'm just going to put the new water pump in now and the, the torque settings 40 newton meters so just run them all up lightly and then run round them one at a time uh, just setting them to 40. Yeah, 
rug kept putting away and I could I could ask her to leave. It's just going to put the uh, bottom idler pulley on and the torque setting for this one is 20 newton meters. Now the top idler pulley, I'm just going to leave off until the belt's on. So it just makes it a bit easier to get it on and you pull it down just to get the tension on it nicely and put it in after. So. Now I'm just going to put the uh, next step now, I'm just going to put the tensioner on. Now you should always just check this stud and have a, just have a look at it, make sure it looks okay first. On the early models, we were meant to change this stud, uh, but it does. you do really want to be talking that up properly because they used to have an issue with the, um, the stud cracking and the tension come off. So, um, But the tensioner, you put it on and then there's a, just try to show you, a little, uh, low, just to the left of that uh, the image there, to the left of the core plug, is where uh, this part of your tensioner locates into. That just locates into that groove and locks it in place. So just need to put that in there. We're just gonna put it on, push that into the back, and then we're just gonna put the nut on and just wind it on loosely, just so it um, we don't want it tight. Obviously we won't be able to adjust it um, before we nip it up. So and just locate that on now, and then we'll work the belt on. And now at this stage, the pulley's on, just a tiny little bit of free play there, but uh, you can just feel that arm at the back and just feel that it's in the groove. It'll only rock just a tiny bit, so it's just to hold it so you can actually put the tension on it. Now obviously I've still got the timing pin out. I haven't, I haven't moved the camera at all, so I know it's still in the same place. I'm just going to route the belt round now. Right, so I'm just going to um, start on the camshaft, put the belt round, because if you don't do it this way, you can't really get it around the tensioner very well because of this lip on the outside. So we'll start on the camshaft, work it around the tensioner, around the idler, onto the uh, crankshaft. Then we'll come up and round and we'll we'll leave, obviously, a little bit of slack here. Uh, it'll be about two, two worth of slack just so that we can put the idler pulley on. And that'll then put it easier just to do it like this and then put the idler in after. And it just nicely pulls that bit of tension down between the two pulleys on the top. Uh, sometimes it's easy with with a couple here just to work the belt round. You can do it on your own, um, but so it does help if you've just got another person to sort of hold the belt on in places while you do it. Uh, so I'll just get all that loop round now, and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. So obviously, as soon as we've got the uh, belt around the camshaft, we'll just put the locking pin back in as well. And um, when fitting a cam belt, sometimes they have arrows on them, um, but if it has, hasn't got an arrow on it, you just want to fit it to have the right in so that you can read it facing towards the engine um, the way that the direction that the engine's turning over so I'll now fit this tonight this direction there obviously this one ain't got any arrows on it Right, so we've got that uh, this first attempt at it. You'll we'll see it's right, but so we run it down that side first. It uh, is fairly taut there, but obviously this is going to be. We can take this side up with a tensioner, so and it's nice and tight around this side to the fuel pump. And we've just got a little bit of slack just there, so we can just get the tensioner, get just get this uh, next idler on. But if you feel these belts before you take it off, they're always really taut across the top here. So I'm just get that in now. Just seems to be that's the way that I found easiest to fit them. Uh, in the past, so we'll just pop that idler on now and uh, then we'll run you through checking it. And again, the top idler pulley 20 newton meters. So as it comes around this side, got a little bit of slack on this side, this side's nice and taut. Now that that's on. Um, obviously, this side's left slack because that's the idea of the tensioner. You take the slack up. Now, before you um, just tension it as well, just have a good look round and just make sure the belt's all the way around the pulleys correctly on all the teeth. So, um, but uh, yeah, we'll just get it tensioned up now. Now, if you look at the tensioner, 
it just shows you it's got a little arrow on there to show which way to turn it so you'll be turning it clockwise with six mil allen key and what we're looking to do is this little arrow there will move round and we want to be stopping that when it's in the middle of this little groove there so we'll turn it around with the allen key until it's in the middle position hold it in that middle position while nipping up the tensioner the nut itself so and um, the torque setting for the tensioner nut is 20 newton meters and then 45 degrees so there's two part one on this obviously our digital torque wrench does both but if you haven't got that um you just have to use an angle gauge to set that so um, but just uh, we'll just pull that round now i'll just show you doing that i can't yeah i can't get anything on the torque wrench I don't know if I can. Uh, 20 newton meters should be enough to hold it so that you can release the allen key and see the arrows in the right place now i'll just do the 45 degrees right so that's just talk that up quickly and you can just see the arrows bang in the middle there so all we need to do now i'm just going to remove all the timing pins and then we're going to turn turn the engine over we're going to do two full rotations of the crankshaft so if you just take note you could just put like a little paint mark on the crankshaft and just do two full turns uh, and then once you've done two full turns just line it back up put all your pins in and just make sure everything's bang on in line uh, and then you know that you're not you've not got no contact anywhere so it's just a nice little check just to um just to reassure that everything's okay so and everything's lining up bang on so we'll just do that quick and then uh, run you on from there Right, so just on two full rotations just put a little paint mark on there just as a rough guide so i know i've been round twice well i've been round twice that we've um just checking everything the crankshaft the camshaft um pulleys lined up bang on with the old, with the mark again the fuel pumps lined up bang on just put the tool in there just to check it and same again with the crankshaft uh, tool on that just fits in the plunger just sits nicely in there so that's absolutely bang in line so so you know we're all good at that everything's talked up correctly all we've got to do now is just take the pins back out just start building everything back up so I'll just run you through i'll just fly through the video a bit as i get um, everything all the engine mount and the covers put back on it's basically just rebuilding everything back as you took it off uh, and then i'll just run you through topping the cooling system up and bleeding the system as well so um, but we'll just get everything back together now and run you through that shortly
Right, so we've now got pretty much all the top work done. Uh, I normally build up the top first so that I can fill the header tank up with coolant, just get that chance to work around the system a little bit while we build the bottom up. And then I'll run you through bleeding it up. But all I'll do now is just fill the fill the tank up just to uh, uh, just till it sort of settles a bit and just leave it about three quarters of the way up the bottle. Uh, and then I'll uh, then we'll get the underneath work done and I'll just run you through bleeding the system after that. So. Also as well, I always just leave the top engine cover off and once I'm done, I'll leave the under tray off as well, just so I can just run it up on the ramp um, just to just so you can see everything and make sure everything's sealed up and not leaking. Right, so now the crank pulleys on, just going to put the alternator belt on. It's just a simple case of routing it around all the pulleys uh, and then just put your spanner on there, just pull the tension off and just let that go. And once you've got the tension, once you've let the uh, let it spring back, just have a good look around all the pulleys, make sure the alternator belt's on all the ribs correctly. At this stage now, all we're really left with is just co cosmetic trims to put on underneath, got the side trim to put on here. So all I'm going to do now is just drop it down. I'm just going to uh, I'm just run you through bleeding the cooling system. Right, so we've dropped it down now. Just see where we've been up in the air. The, the coolant level's just dropped a little bit. All I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to run that up now. Then I'm going to start it up. Um, obviously, just have a quick listen, make sure everything sounds okay. Just have a quick look at the alternator belt as well just make sure it's running nice and true and i'm um, just basically there isn't no bleed screws as such on this so i'm just going to leave it running for about five minutes now keep an eye on the coolant level just topping it up as it drops about five minutes running with the cap off should be enough to bleed it up Once it's got warm and it's got, and then uh, you've left it overnight, you just want to check the coolant level in the morning. But all I'll do is leave it running, just keep an eye on it for a bit, and then once uh, once I'm happy, it's not going to drop too much. I'll just put it up in there, have a good look round, make sure everything's sealed up and not leaking, and then we can um, just get everything else back together. Put the top cover on, just have a good look round your fuel pipes as well. So. Um, but uh, I thought I'd share the video with you all. Hope it helps someone have a go at theirs. And if you liked it, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll just leave the video recording, just run you through any of the last bits at the end. Uh, don't, forget, don't forget to check out the links in the description below if you want to check out any of the parts or tools used.